starting the first illustration an ac source of 230 watt is connected in a series with 8 milli henry inductor and 80 microfarad capacitor and a 400 ohm resistor so first of all writing which components are provided us so the voltage v is given 230 volt then comes inductor l 8 milli henry so better we will convert it into a simple form 8 into 10 to power minus 3 henry then comes capacitor 80 microfarad that is equal to 80 into 10 to power minus 6 farad resistor is of 400 ohm and we have to calculate first of all the resonant frequency so the resonant frequency is denoted by small f f is equal to 1 upon twice pi under root of lc so let's substitute the values one by one the value of pi is 3.14 into under root the value of inductor L is 8 into 10 to power minus 3 into the value of C is 80 into 10 to power minus 6 that is 80 microfarad and after simplifying this much result we will get the value of F as 199 hertz. Now the second task which is given to us is the impedance of the circuit and the value of the current at resonant frequency. So starting with the impedance. The magnitude of impedance is given like under root of R square plus omega L minus 1 over omega c whole square that is equal to under root of r square the value omega l is xl and 1 upon omega c is xc whole square now i am finding the values of xl and xc individually so the value of xl is equal to omega into l that is equal to twice pi fl because omega is equal to twice pi f. Now substituting all these values twice pi into 199 into the value of inductor is 8 into 10 to power minus 3. So after simplifying we will get the value of XL as 10 ohm. Similarly the value of XC we can find out which is equal to 1 upon omega C and omega is equals to twice pi F. So it is 1 upon twice pi FC. So 1 upon twice pi into 199 into the value of C is 80 microfarad. Therefore Xc is equal to 10 ohm. And here at the resonant frequency The value of XL is equal to the value of XC. So according to the value of impedance Z, therefore mod Z will be equal to under root of R square that is equal to R. 
and what is the value of R is given? It is 400 ohm. And so, according to Ohm's law, I can find out the value of current I is equal to V over R. The value of V is 230 and the resistance is of 400 ohm. So, the final answer will be 0.575 ampere. And this is the value of electric current. Now the third one. So what is the third task? The third task is to find out the RMS value of voltage across the components of the circuit. So we have to find out the RMS voltage across inductor L. RMS voltage V across capacitor C and the RMS voltage V across the resistance R. So I am starting my analysis with the inductor and we know one relation between the voltage and current is given by I RMS into XL. So that is equal to 0.575 and here we are considering that the simple current is the RMS current at the resonant frequency into the value of XL is 10. Now multiplying this quantity by 10 we will get 5.75 volt. Similarly if you want to find out about capacitor therefore Vc is equal to I RMS into Xc that is equal to 0.575 into 10. So here also Vl is equal to Vt and the voltage across R is equal to I RMS into simple resistance R. So, 0 0.575 into 400 that is equal to 230 volt. That is already given in the statement of the illustration number 1. Now, we start illustration number 2. Starting the illustration number 2. For which value of omega will the impedance of this figure will be maximum? So this is the figure of AC circuit in which we have connected the inductor and capacitor in parallel connection and with this parallel connection at last we have connected the resistance in a series connection and we also have to find out the maximum value of impedance and the RMS current. So, the value of impedance in this arrangement that is mod Z is equal to under root of R square plus 1 over omega C minus 1 over omega L whole square. So, this is equation number 1. Now, when this term omega C minus omega L whole square will become minimum then the value of mode Z will be maximum because they are inversely proportional to each other and so to make this quantity minimum I am assuming that omega C minus 1 over omega L is 0 and therefore 
ओमेगा सी इज इक्वल टू वन ओवर ओमेगा एल And now I can conclude one statement that by taking this omega on left hand side, finally I will end with this answer: omega is equal to one upon under root L C. And so, as omega is equal to one upon under root L C, then mod Z will be infinite. And as the impedance of any circuit is infinite, then its RMS current is related with the voltage of the circuit, and impedance of that. So the final result will be zero. So the IRMS RMS current is having the value zero, and the value of omega is also of this end. The maximum value of impedance has been also obtained. Now let's start illustration number three. Illustration number three: The AC voltage and the current in an LCR AC series circuit are given by this expression. So V is equal to 200 under root two cos 3000 T. Minus fifty five degree. This is in volt. So this two hundred under root two is your Vm. This three thousand is omega, and fifty five degree is delta. Similarly, in the equation of electric current I is equal to ten under root two cos of 3000 T minus 10 degree ampere. So this 10 under root 2 is your maximum current I M. 3000 is omega, and here there is delta. Now we have to calculate the impedance, and here in this particular case, the phase difference between voltage and current. You can check it from the relations here minus 55 degree here minus 10 degree. So minus 10 plus 55 that is given by delta is equals to 45 degree. So this is actually the phase difference. And now the value of 10 delta means 1045 is one. And we know for LCR series circuit the value of 10 delta is equal to omega l minus 1 over omega c divided by capital R means the resistance And now I am substituting instead of 10 delta, I am putting 1. Therefore, taking R in right hand side, so here R will be omega L minus 1 over omega C. So now we have the value of resistance R. This is actually equation 2, and 10 delta is giving the number as equation 1. Now substitute the value in mode Z that is equal to under root of R square plus omega L minus one over omega C whole square. But according to the equation two, omega L minus one over omega C is capital R. So I can substitute in this equation. 
the value of impedance mod z is equal to under root of r square plus r square that is equal to under root 2 r square and more simplify result is under root 2 r and also with the help of this equation mod z is equal to vm over im and that is 200 under root 2 divided by 10 under root 2 so this root 2 root 2 will be cancelled so mod z is equal to 20 and according to this equation mod z is equal to under root 2 r and we have to find out the resistance also of this circuit so for resistance i can divide this equation by under root 2 so my result will be 14.14 ohm so this is the value of resistance r and don't forget to write down the unit of impedance also. Impedance is having the unit of O. So both are obtained faithfully and with this our illustration number 3 is over. Let's start illustration number 4. An electric current has both AC and DC components. The value of DC component means IDC is equal to 12 ampere and the AC component of the current so it is IAC that is given as 9 sin omega t ampere see whenever there is AC current there will be either sinusoidal function or a cosine function but it should be a alternating not the steady means here you can see clearly from the DC component of the current, the value is constant. So the value of current is not changing with respect to time. Now we have to determine the formula for the resultant current. Now the resultant current is given by the addition of the DC component of the current and AC component of the current. So I am writing over here in this way. The resultant current is equal to I that is actually the addition of IDC plus IAC that is equal to 12 ampere plus 9 sin omega T. And don't forget to write down the unit in the resultant current also. So here we have obtained the resultant current equation. And now other task which is given to us is to find out the RMS current. So the value of RMS current is given in this way. I RMS that is equal to root mean square so we have to first of all find out the average value of i square and then we have to square root it so let's substitute the value of i the value of i is 12 plus 9 sin omega t and its square so this particular formula is similar to a plus b whole square so i am expanding over here but don't forget to write down the mean bracket so this is under root of the 12 square is 144 plus 12 nines are 108 into 2 means 216 sin omega t Here I have used the 2AB and at last we have the value of 81 sin square omega t and the mean bracket is over. Remember this square root is also along this side. 
now what i am doing the average is taken over the time interval and that is equal to periodic time and so i am individually applying the average in this way square root average of 144 plus now 216 is outside of the mean and only for sin omega t i am applying the bracket similarly in the last term so 81 is outside sin square omega t and so we have the value of sin omega t is equal to 0 because average sin omega t that is equal to 0 and the value of average sin square omega t that is equal to 1 by 2 and the average value of 144 is a constant so i can write down it direct as 144 so here the value of irms that is equal to under root of this 144 is as it is plus 216 into 0 so it result is 0 plus 81 into 1 by 2 so we are obtaining the result in this way under root 144 plus 81 by 2 that is nearly to 40.5 so after solving this square root we will get the answer 13.58 ampere so that is the root mean square value of current and hence with this our illustration number 4 is over illustration number 5 calculate the resultant inductance of two inductors l1 and l2 when they are connected in parallel so first of all we will see the arrangement of such kind of circuit so here is the inductor l1 and parallel to that inductor l2 is connected and we have to find out the resultant inductance and as this is the ac circuit so the voltage which is passing through this circuit is of this kind v is equal to vm cos omega t and now i am starting my analysis with the assumption that the inductive reactance of the two coils means l1 and l2 that are zl1 and zl2 respectively also since they are connected in the parallel way so according to the law of parallel connection the resultant reactance will be given by z is equal to z l1 z l2 divided by z l1 plus z l2 now substituting the value of z l1 so what is the value of z l first of all that is j omega l so substituting by giving the subscript so j omega l1 into j omega l2 divided by j omega l1 plus 
J omega L2. And here, if the resultant inductance is equal to L, means here the value of Z I can put over here, means J omega L. So I can put the values like this. Here J square will become omega square L1 L2. And in the denominator, J omega is getting common into L1 plus L2. So here one J is cancelled, one omega is cancelled. So the result will be in terms of L. Therefore, L is equal to L1 L2 divided by L1 plus L2. So this is the final equation for a series sorry parallel connection of inductors L1 and L2 and this is the resultant inductor. Now we have to calculate the value of impedance for the given illustration number 6.